In today's video, we are going to take a look at three of the most hyped note-taking apps of 2023 and the start of 2024. With good reasons, these app, uh, apps have been gaining a lot of traction and people have been moving towards them. We are going to talk about some of the updates as well as take a look at their roadmaps and where they are headed in the future. So, AnyType has actually done a lot since the last time I looked at this or the last time I did a video like this which was back in early 2024 I think uh, but uh, they have released uh, their multiple spaces as well as the multiplayer mode which is really important has been a really important part of what any type is trying to do this now allows for collaboration which is really really cool they have also added their gallery which uh, actually has a lot of templates so you have everything from a community space to daily journal data vault uh, a lot of different templates here you can choose from movie database, neighbor space. So as you can see, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different templates you can choose from, which makes it a lot easier to actually use the application. They've also released their pricing plan together with this real-time collaboration multiplayer mode. Uh, and we will take a look at the pricing. So pricing wise, they have uh, three different plans. They have the Explorer plan, which is free. And this is probably uh, best for uh, just taking simple notes, especially if you don't take a lot of notes, this can actually work out for you and you can just stick with the free plan. But they also have a builder plan, which is best uh, if you are actually going to collaborate with someone. You get unlimited viewers per shared space. You get three shared spaces. You get 10 editors per sh shared space. Uh, priority support as well as a global unique name from seven plus characters. You also have the co-creator plan which is $2.99 for three years. This gives you a global unique name. This gives you even more uh, gigabytes of network uh, space. Three shared spaces, 10 editors per shared space as well as unlimited viewers per shared space. So. Uh, similar to this, uh, but I'm guessing that this will end up coming in cheaper, will it? Uh, 99 times 3. I, I, math isn't my strong side, so, uh, side, so I won't try to do the maths on this. Uh, but uh, you get a lot more network space if that is something that is important to you. So they have released their pricing plan together with their... Uh, multiplayer mode so this can now uh, allow for real-time collaboration as well as things like um, uh, you saw that the gallery had a community space so you can actually host communities on here if you wanted to or use this as a way to uh, send information to your uh, community so any type is headed more towards this real-time collaboration um, uh, space and becoming more of a team application or an application for multiple people uh, as well as still being the knowledge base that a lot of people started uh, using. Apart from that we have had a lot of quality of life improvements uh, especially the mobile app has gotten a lot easier to use with the ability to now just press the plus and add a type uh, instead of actually uh, making a page then turning it into something else and uh, having a lot of an easier workflow when it comes to um, the mobile application and adding things on the go as well as uh, even better search so they have improved the search which is really important so most of these uh, new applications especially for any type and Tana and one of the main things they need to fix is uh, 
things like quality of life improvements, better search, more stable uh, applications, especially any type uh, needs to focus on that since it is the newest one out of the three applications. Uh, it uh, needs some time to just fix uh, all of the basic things you expect in a note-taking app. So quality of life improvements are welcome in all three applications and that is probably what most of the updates will give us. Uh, so that was the first application, AnyType, and all of these has actually have actually released their pricing plan now. Last time it was only capacities, but now all three have a pricing plan. Let's just quickly take a look at the roadmap here as well. So we are done with Q1, Q2. There are still some things that needs to be done, uh, but we are in Q3 and in Q4, they will have an open API, login fro uh, flow, recovery phrase control, uh, things like Kanban updates, set and collections improvements. As you can see, a lot of uh, small improvements, date as an object, I would consider this an uh, improvement as well, tag as an object, this is something I think capacities already have. Onboarding updates, this is also really important, we will have uh, publish to web support for handwritten notes on tablet and allow uh, analytics up, uh, opt out. Uh, as well as any toggle creation, but support for handwritten notes on tablet it all is also a really cool uh, major feature. But apart from that, there is a lot of what I would call a quality of life improvements, just making the whole product a lot better with small updates and small uh, improvements as and small features. One more thing to mention is that uh, Anytype also released their web clipper uh, this year. Uh, so we have a web clipper now as well as file as uh, an object. But uh, as you can see, they are working on a lot of different things. Next up, we have Capacities and Capacities has also released a new web clipper. Uh, and this is also just like any type of object based note taking app. Uh, so you will need to have what in any type is called uh, types, but in capacities it is objects. They are basically the same thing. When it comes to the different uh, things that uh, capacities has released, again, a lot of uh, improvements, quality of life improvements, that is something you will expect for a long time uh, in these applications, even when they are... Uh, in a more stable place, there will still be a lot of quality of life improvements, but they've also released a new web clipper, which I tested out right here. Uh, so I did a video on the web clipper uh, in one of my productivity news videos, but we can take a look at their roadmap as well. So as I said, they released their web clipper recently. Public API uh, was released uh, recently. This is only for Capacities Pro. Uh, tables was released recently. One of the major things they are working on is offline support, which is uh, a feature that I think everyone wants inside of every note taking app at this point, being able to have all of your notes accessible uh, offline is really, really good. Uh, and it is it is something that uh, is expected in most uh, applications at this point. They are also bringing a calendar integration so you can uh, bring your calendar to capacities and combine that with your notes. I'm guessing there will be a Google Calendar integration. Mobile app is still uh, in progress. It isn't uh, it isn't fully launched yet. I don't pay for Capacities Pro, so I haven't been able to test this out, but uh, currently it is in early access for Pro or, or Believers. Uh, tablet app AI Assistant 2.0. Uh, Capacities actually has an AI Assistant inside of it, uh, something that uh, any type does not have uh, and that isn't planned either uh, while Tana released their AI uh, recently but more on that later. So we have smart media, more powerful features for your media objects. This is also an exciting one. Um, 
to be able to capture more media uh, inside of Cavacities. Import notes from other apps. This is also not necessarily important, but this is something a lot of people want before they can fully move from one note-taking app to another. Uh, they want to bring all of their notes from their previous note-taking app. So this isn't necessarily important for the product as a whole, but it will make it easier for people to actually dedicate a lot of time, energy, and invest a lot in building out their capacities. Task management is also something uh, that they uh, really uh, want inside, or uh, the consumers really want inside of note-taking applications. People want to actually spend uh, less money on different applications and spend less time inside of different applications. You often end up not knowing where you've put something when you use different uh, applications. There are a lot of requests uh, and bugs here as well. Um, uh, so you can go through them and see for yourself. But uh, a lot of uh, quality of life improvements here as well. The pricing plan on capacities has been around for a long time. This is around $10. This is around $12, $13. Uh, that's build yearly, uh, build monthly, this is 12, this is 15. Um, prices might vary depending on where you live. I live in Norway, so I get the prices in Norwegian kroners. Uh, but they are uh, doing a lot of a lot of new changes to the applications. The main one, like the biggest change, being the commitment to make Capacities an offline first application. Uh, that is uh, what's uh, the mo what is the most important thing for them right now, and it is it is a big project to start off. Like any type, for example, is fully offline, uh, and uh, it stores all of your files locally so it is available offline uh, no matter um, no matter your internet connection you will still be able to access all of your files uh, that's what um, that's what capacities is trying to do as well being able to access all of your files inside of or access the whole application with all of your notes when you are uh, when you don't have an internet connection. This is a, a feature that is really important uh, for them and it is also a feature that, that uh, a lot of consumers expect now. So Tana is probably the app that has changed the most since I uh, last did a video like this where I uh, reviewed these three applications and talked about the updates. Uh, it has gotten a lot of AI, so everything from voice memos where you're actually able to talk out your notes and it will do transcription for you to AI chat, uh, the same uh, type of chat that you have in apps like Reflect and Mem, where you can actually talk to your notes. You uh, also have a meeting assistant now that will join you inside of different meetings and actually transcribe the meeting for you and work as a real assistant. So Tana has ended up being an AI heavy platform, a place where AI uh, really thrives and uh, it also works similarly to uh, capacities and any type being object based just that the, the objects here are actually um, the super tags so you can create objects using super tags and it just shows that object based note taking is really good for AI uh, and that's what Tana actually has done. They've built an uh, object based note taking app and they've put a lot of AI into it and a lot of different AI features. With that they also released their pricing. And pricing wise this is $14 a month built yearly which is expensive. So Rome research is considered expensive. This is even more expensive than Rome and $18 a month built monthly. They have a free plan which gives you all the editor capabilities, three shared workspaces up to 0 0.5 gigabytes of file storage and five megabytes uh, file size upload. Um, so this isn't 
too bad if you aren't going to add a lot of files into here but uh, in order to actually utilize the AI powers which is the selling point of the application you probably have to go for this plan they have added AI credits with this uh, as I said a lot of new AI everything from custom AI agent live transcriptions voice recordings audio enabled super tags and fields all of these are actually new features you also have smart integrations with Google Calendar Sync and Outlook coming input API access readwise integration this has actually been around for a while but you get unlimited shared workspaces you get 10 gigabytes file storage and add-on for more no limits on file size uploads and password protection on published pages so where uh tana is heading tana is actually the only app on this list that does not have a public roadmap but taking a look at their website they have this four teams um page which uh, just makes you believe that Tana will heavily lean towards teams if you uh, just look at their Tana uh, Inc slash product you will get these sprint boards which is something teams use a lot uh, feature maps again a feature for teams even though it has this for individuals um, page I think that Tana will heavily heavily rely on uh, features for teams uh, and becoming um, application for teams uh, but for individuals as well but I think that they will focus on the teams plan um, so that is just something I uh, think uh, it will become a lot like notion uh, and the way notion works where uh, people can use it as individuals but it is uh, amazing for teams as well that's where i think they will end up um and uh, overall i would probably have liked to see um like to see a roadmap to be able to tell you where this exactly is headed uh, but uh, i think that uh, they will continue to focus on AI and improving the AI capabilities within the application. Uh, I think that Tana will end up relying heavily on AI also in the future and it will become uh, probably become the app that Mem promised us to be. Uh, so being able to capture a lot of stuff and having AI organize it, uh, it I'm guessing that's where they will end up in the end. Uh, because uh, they have already presented us with a way to take notes that makes it a lot easier to organize things than it previously was. So just adding a tag to everything will make it organized. I am guessing that um, AI will even make it easier for us to stay organized inside of an application like this. So my guess is that this will end up becoming what Mem promised to be. That's my thought on Tana. And that was all of the three different applications. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will try to get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video.